Chapter 3 and 4 of Rainbow Magic Special Edition Joyless from a Vacation Dream. But first, I owe you an apology. As yesterday, I did not post a video of me reading, and I said I would every day. Trapped. Quick, Rachel Gaps. We have to do something. Jack Frost raised his hands, but Joy was quicker. Waving her wand so that it flared like a candle, she pointed it at the sandy floor. There was a sizzling sound and the floor glowed red hot. With a cry, Jack Frost leaped back. Ow! The floor is hot. The icicles on his beard started to drip. Melt the window, Joy! Kirsty cried. Let the sun shine in! Joey raced to the window and touched the panels of the window. There was a faint sizzling, fizzing noise, and a really small patch on the window began to melt. My wand is running out of magic, Joy gasped. Freeze! Jack was pointing his fingers before. Rachel watched in dismay as the red glow faded from the floor. Quick joy, George. Come on, one joy whispered. It was a sizzle and a loud snap as a maze of splinters spread across the ice. Crack the window shattered. The sun sunlight came streaming in. Jack Frost stumbled backwards with his hands over his eyes. Guards, he shouted. Let's go, Christy said, flying into the air with Rachel. Come on, Joy. But Joy didn't move. She lay on the window ledge, panting. Her face was white, and her wand had lost all its sparkle. Christy and Rachel swooped down and tried to help Joy up. I can't move, Joy murmured. Too tired. No magic left. Don't worry, Rachel said, trying to stay home. We'll help you. Christy, can you take this shell while I carry Joy? Christy nodded. Rachel put her arms around the little fairy and flew up on strong and hard. Even though the fairy was tiny, it was really difficult to fly with her. Joy hung limply, her eyes drooping and her eyes closed. Guards! Jack Frost yelled again. Quick, Rachel! Through the window, said Christy. Jack Frost raised his hands and a gust of freezing air filled the room. With a loud crack of the window froze over over with a fresh sheet of glittering ice. Christy looked around desperately. There was a narrow staircase on the other side of the room. Let's go that way, she called to Rachel. Carrying and drawing the shell, the two girls flew up the across the room and up the spiral staircases. Below there was the sound of hands and feet and shouting. The goblins are coming. Stop those fairies now, Jack Frost yelled, and the goblins started to run up the stairs. Curses spotted a window ahead. The joy's wand hadn't used up all its magic. We could have melted our way out, she panted. Yes, then. The, girl, the two girls heard a faint scratching noise and a little voice singing. All day long I dig and dig, all day long I dig and dig. I know that voice, Rachel Gaps. It's Sally the Sand Beetle. A little brown and black beetle popped its head out of the wall. Hello again, Sally said in surprise. What are you doing here? She looked at Joy and her eyes widened. What happened? Put a long... It's a long story, Chrissy replied. We really need to get out of here, Sally. Rachel said, fast. Come here, you pesky fairies, the goblins shouted as they charged up the stairs. Case. Quick, said Sally, follow me. Her legs whirred, reared as she made the tunnel bigger. Chrissy dived in, hooking the shell in her arms. Rachel put Joy in behind her. They just made it before the goblins rushed around the corner. The girls held their breath and stayed very still. Would the goblins notice the, the tunnel? 
Can I release the heavy footsteps buttered by and move on up the stairs? Kirsty and Rachel slithered through the tunnel, which joined the magic shop. It led to a narrow window ledge on the other side of the castle. That was close, Ellie said, waving her feelers. Very, Kirsty agreed. You can't stay here, Rachel said, glancing at the window behind them. The goblins might see us. Can't you fly away, Sally asked. Christy shook her head, trying not to look down. The beach was a long way below us. We can't carry Dorian to show that far. Oh, what are we going to do, Rachel said desperately. Oh, they all jumped and looked up. A black-headed seagull was flying towards them. Do you fairies need some help, it called? A friend's help. The seagull looked as big as a horse, but its black eyes were kind. My name is Gregory, he called. Is there something wrong with Joy? She used up all her magic against Jack Frost, Joy explained. Joy groaned and her eyelids flickered. We need to take the magic scallop show back to the underwater cave, said Kirsty. No problem, Gregory declared. Climb on my back and I'll fly you down to the sea. The girls didn't need the seagull to tell them twice. Rachel scrambled on first with Joy and Christy followed with the sculpture. They dug their hands into the soft white feathers on Gregory's back and held on tight. At that moment, the goblins ran down the stairs. Gregory f flapped his powerful wings and flew away from the window ledge. The goblins were too late. We're safe, Rachel shouted as the wind swept through her head. No! They turned and saw Jack Frost standing out of the great window. The window of the great hall. You pesky fairies, he yelled. Bring back that show! Never! Christy shouted back. He laughed happily as Gregory swooped over the sea. Oh goodness, Joy mumbled, starting to wake up. I don't feel very well. Everything's swinging. It's okay, we're on Gregory's back, Rachel told her. She squeezed Joy's hand. We're safe now. I'm afraid I can only take you as far as the surface of the sea, Gregory called over his shoulder. You'll need to swim the rest of the way to the cave. Christy looked over at Rachel. How are we going to do that? We can't breathe underwater. Don't worry, said Joy, trying to sit up. We can use fairy magic. But your wand has run out of magic, Rachel reminded her. We don't need my wand, Joy replied. She's looking much better now. What we need is this. She rummaged in her beach bag and pulled out a sparkling pink bottle. It's a bottle of bubble mixture, Christy said. Joy pulled out a small bubble wand with a circle at one end. It's fairy bubble mixture, said Joy. She dipped the bubble wand into the bottle and blew three big bubbles. She handed one to Rachel and one to Christy and kept one for herself. Put the bubble on your head. The bubble sank down over the girls' faces until their heads were completely enclosed. They looked just like old-fashioned diving helmets. Joy put on one on too. Then she patted the seat with smooth feathers. Goodbye, Gregory. Thank you for rescuing us. She holding on to the magic shell. She looked at Rachel and Christy. Ready? They nodded nervously. The sea beneath them looked very deep. One, two, three, jump, Gregory called.